Turn your chair.
Test one, two. Test. Test one, two, test, test. Test, test, one, two, test, test. That's weird. I've never I've never seen that. Usually when it's all controlled on this, there's no feedback coming from a computer. That's a thing. I don't know.
Thanksgiving week hoops inside Emerson Gymnasium as the Wheaton College Lions play host to the Johnson and Wales Wildcats. Thanks for being with us on the Max Sports Network tonight, everybody. I'm Jackson Walsh alongside myself, Michael Clapp, Rude Clapp. We got a good matchup on hand tonight. Yeah, it should be a great matchup. Two teams in different situations. The Wildcats coming in, not having a win this season, looking for their first win today. And the Lions coming in scorching hot, three wins in a row. Should post for a great matchup. Yeah, you said it, three straight wins for the Lions. And in those last three wins, it's been two players leading the way for Wheaton. Kiki Walters. The first-year guard putting up 10 rebound games in two of those contests alongside a 20-point burst out at Plymouth State this past weekend. And Abby Fernandes, scorching as always, has scored in double figures in all of her last three games. And that double-figure performance has named her the NUMAC Women's Basketball Athlete of the Week this past week. And here they are right now getting introduced. Ready for tip-off here on the NUMAC Sports Network. Johnson & Wales and Wheaton coming your way soon. Alan Wickstrom on the public address here at Wheaton College announcing both sides starting lineups for tonight. Johnson and Wales was announced first. Their starters will be number three, Sarah Winiski, number 11, Peyton Ryan, number 32, Maya Johnson, number 33, Peyton Oliver, and number 50, Michaela Caruso. Wheaton puts out the same starters that he did in the win at Plymouth State. Kiki Walters, Emma Kiernan, Regan Cater, Abby Fernandes, and Greta Minos. Clap, this is a lineup that's absolutely stacked, and you can see a breakout game from any of those five players. Yeah, it's key to have the consistency in your starting lineup, knowing who's going to step up for you. You know what you're going to get from Fernandes, the reigning New Mac player of the week. But it's going to take a couple, a couple girls to step up in this very good matchup. Wheaton in the home whites, Johnson and Wales in the away blues. These two teams met last year at Johnson and Wales. It was a 66-57 victory for the visiting Lions, and they look to make it two in a row over Johnson and Wales. Fernandes wins the tip for her squad, misses on that first jumper. Lions get the offensive rebound. They'll set things up with Fernandes running the point straight away. Johnson and Wales coming out in a 2-3 zone. Don't see that a lot in the college game. Yeah, it's going to be key to have a girl right now, uh, number 10, Regan Cater at the, at the foul line. And right there, big bucket. Lions get on the board. Count it and one, Emma Kiernan. Junior transfer out of Wesleyan is an absolute hustler. She finished there, going to the line to try to convert the three-point play. Kiernan at the line. Knocks down the free throw. She earns three points the hard way. Wheaton's out to an early lead. Kiernan, the lone junior on this very young Wheaton team, only featuring one junior in Kiernan, and then lone senior on the team, Ryan Sachs, not getting the start tonight. Wildcats have their first possession. Works straight away, there's Caruso. Fed inside with the left coming off the bottom of the backboard, no good, that was Oliver. Walters is gonna push for Wheaton. Swing pass from Fernandes, gets tipped away off the hand of Oliver, it's gonna stay with the Lions on their own end. As we see early for the Lions, they're going to look out to run off rebounds. I think the Wildcats will be looking for number 33, Payne Oliver, quite frequently in the paint as the height advantage is evident tonight. Oliver can also hit it from outside. I was watching her in warm-ups, and she was knocking down everything from three-point range. No good on a three there from Minos. There's Kiernan, offensive board, gets it to Fernandes. Fernandes sets up right elbow, looking for an open player. There's Walters, left wing three. Can't get that one to go. Cater with the rebound off the mark. Kiernan put it back up, then got blocked, but they're still going to hold on to it. Long two, and there's Kiki Walters getting on the board. She had a breakout game in the points column. 
at Plymouth State this weekend. Led the way for Wheaton with 20 points. She can also rebound the heck out of the ball as well. Had three straight games earlier in the season with 10 straight rebounds. The foul coming away from the ball called by the referee on the baseline. It's going to be the first foul going against Wheaton. Foul is going to go against Kiernan. Shot clock resets to 20. Wildcats take it on the baseline. Worked around outside. Lofted down low. There's Oliver. Oliver posting up with the left. Can't get it to fall over the front of the rim there on the offensive rebound. Was Winiski. She gets it back in the corner from Johnson. Johnson into the paint. Drives in. Oliver has the handle. Then lost it. 10 on the shot clock. Pump fake. Winiski goes up with it. Comes up short. Cater tracks down the board. Wheaton goes back the other way. Fernandes lifts her fist, calls out a set, dishes it off right to Minos. Worked around the perimeter. Now Fernandes with it. Pull up, free throw line, got it to go. That's her bread and butter right there, Clap. Yeah, you're going to need somebody at the foul line. I think Abby Fernandez, their main playmaker, will be that girl. I think it's going to be very evident to have someone open, kick out, either drive. It's going to, she's going to be a triple threat there, very skilled player. Yeah, Fernandez is at her best when she's knocking down that free throw jumper and she did it there to start the night early and Lions gonna force a turnover here. Oliver took steps of the ball and we'll have our first substitutions of the night. Ryan Sachs checks in and Riley Sprague both entering the game for the first time tonight for the Lions. Sprague will bring it up. She's a sophomore out of Jamestown, Rhode Island. Played her high school ball at the Nepsack level at St. Andrews. Walters. Mid-range, got it. She's been great so far. And we're just three minutes in, and Johnson and Wales has seen enough. Kim Dwett takes a timeout. Three minutes in, Lions now to a 9 nothing lead. Back from break here, Wheaton, Peter Wiggins, the Wheaton Lions super fan, getting the crowd pumped up as they're storming out to a 9-0 lead over the Wildcats. Autumn Ford into the game. She finds Oliver down low. Count the basket. And one. Wildcats on the board. Good feed there from Ford, who just checked in, finding Oliver slashing onto that block. Oliver, the junior forward out of Ramsey, New Jersey. Going up to Providence to play her college ball. She sinks the free throw. Referees tonight, Paul Semeno, Jenna Buffy, and Scott Carlson. Sprague, right wing, dishes straight away. Walters, she'll swing it back, left to Sachs. Now Fernandes. Can't get the pull up. It's going to draw the foul, though, disagreeing with the call, Autumn Ford. It's got to be a factor for Ford there playing defense if she did her scouting, knowing that Fernandes could pull up at any second. Yeah, very skilled player at Fernandes. I think it's going to be very important for Autumn Ford to stay out of foul trouble for the Wildcats. They might have limited options to try and cover Fernandes. Pass from Walters gets tipped away, staying with Wheaton 12 on the shot clock. We will have a week off before they're back in action. They'll be back here at Emerson Gymnasium next Tuesday night hosting Curry College. Fernandes, baseline, into traffic, swatted away. Caruso steps up on the block and sends away Fernandes' attempted shot. Ford is going to use the screen from Caruso. Good pick and roll there from the Wildcats, but Caruso couldn't finish at the rim. Even after the miss, Jackson, we can see the Wildcats getting their taller girls getting involved here as they're evidently more vertically 
helpful for the for the Wildcats tonight. Walters kick outside to Sachs. Got Caruso on her feet up and off the backboard and in. You know, Sachs, the lone senior on this team, has struggled so far early in the season. If she gets going, that's going to make Wheaton even more dangerous than they are in this three-game win streak. Johnson Wales works it around. Nima Walker into the game. She swings it over to Oliver and blocked from behind by Sachs. She'll give it off to Sprague. Great lead pass, a little too far in the pass from Riley Sprague to Walters. Hustle play from Abby Fernandes to step up, draw that jump ball. The possession arrow light is off on the scorer's table, but looks like it'll be Johnson and Wales ball after the tie-up. Autumn Ford will bring it up for the Wildcats. Junior guard out of Brooklyn. Inside, good move there. Naima Walker. Makes a guard even more dangerous when they have a post-up game clap. Yeah, and you can see it from Walker there. Um, she also had 15 points her last game, averaging 12 and a half this season. Getting in toward the basket's a higher percentage shot, and I'm sure the Wildcats love that. Walters took it aggressively to the cup cup, blocked away by Caruso. It's going to stay with Wheaton. Lines with a six-point lead about halfway through the first quarter of action. Sacks pass looking for Fernandes. Got tipped away. Shot clock down to 10. Still going to be with the Lions on the baseline. Maddie Mueller to inbound. She just entered the game. Sophomore forward. Out of Carver, Massachusetts, she gets it in the post, posting up on the bigger Caruso, and she traveled with it. Even after that possession, Jackson, you've got to like the constant motion and movement for the Lions on that possession, really dishing out the ball, looking for different options other than Fernandes, getting all that attention. Yeah, for such a young team, it's great to see that offensive flow, which you're not going to find in a lot of teams. The bank's open on Tuesday night there. Peyton Oliver knocks down the long two. Yeah, we show that she had the inside game, expands her game outside, and knocks down the three-point bucket. Fernandes, right elbow too strong. Mueller skies up for the rebound, but as soon as he came down with it, took an extra step with her feet, so another travel will send it back to the Wildcats. Cater and Kiernan both re-entering the game. Maya Johnson running the point for Jay Wu to hand it off to Walker. Swung around the wing in the hands of Oliver, guarded by Kiernan very closely. Right wing, it's Ford. Gathers off the glass, no good. Cater with a long rebound. Minos open in transition. Alexis take the long two. Too much muscle on that one. Fernandes, great save on the near side. Spray open for three. Got it. All set up by Fernandes on that hustle play. Great to see your leader out there going to get that ball and save that possession for the Lions. Fernandes' hustle leads to a Sprague three and one of the best shooters on the floor anytime she's in. Sprague will jack it from anywhere. Good cut from Oliver. Denied. Regan Cater stepping up. First year forward just blossoming every time she steps onto the floor for the Lions, whether it's defensively crashing the glass on both ends or scoring points. Johnson in a bound, gets it into Oliver. Mid-range no good. Ball bounces around, but finds the hands of Emma Kiernan. Works up floor, it's Minos right wing inside. Cater, good cut. No good on the finish. Winiski's going to push the other way. Winiski, hammer pass, right wing, three ball from Ryan, no good. Winiski tracks down the offensive board. She'll keep it. Shot clock resets to 20 on the offensive rebound. Left wing, it's Johnson. Oliver straight away beyond the arc. She'll shoot it from out there. Now Winiski 
Dribbles into a double team. Five seconds on the shot clock was open. She didn't realize it. Going to get up a shot. No good there from Peyton Ryan. Wheaton comes down to the board. About two minutes to go in the first quarter. Sprague's going to slow things down on the offensive end. Gets it to Kiernan. Kiernan dishes right. There's Fernandes. Good backdoor cut by Cater. And a foul is going to go, I believe, against Oliver on the floor before Cater could go up with a layup. I mean, that's just a veteran move on the offensive end from somebody that's only played five, now six games in their collegiate career. Yeah, great look. I mean, down on the block, you're going to get held. You're going to get banged bodies, but you just got to fight through that contact sometimes. Another great look by Fernandes there as well. Look There's for Cater to make an impact on that block. And you said it. Look for Fernandes to do something, and she does it there. Another mid-range for Fernandes. She's up to four points tonight. Wildcats looking to respond. Winiski. Good hedge there from Cater. She gets back on defense. Right wing open for three. Johnson off the mark. Caruso got fouled as she went up with the offensive board, and she'll go to the line for two shots. Free throw line hasn't been Caruso's friend so far this year. Only shooting it at 25% from the charity stripe. Looks pretty sound on that first attempt. Trying to go two of two from the line is Caruso. That is her first bucket of the night. Second one from Caruso off the mark. Ball gets tipped out of bounds. They're going to say off Johnson and Wales. So back the other way the ball goes for the Lions with a minute and a half to play here in the first quarter. Cater doesn't like to shoot it beyond the arc, but she can shoot it from just inside. Kiernan nose down to the hole, got fouled. Kiernan going to the line for two shots, and any time you see her on the floor, she's going to be hustling. Yeah, she saw that gap down the, down the middle of the paint. Uh, we saw the Wildcats switch up to man on that possession. So Kiernan drives in, gets fouled, going to the line for two. First one from Kiernan falls through. As I said, lone junior on the team, and the junior that's a transfer played her first two years of collegiate ball at Wesleyan in Connecticut. The NESCAT Conference as she goes two of two from the line. Calls Wayland, Massachusetts home. Wheaton lead up to 10 now. Left wing, no good on the three is Ryan. Good rebound from Cater. Sprague off to Minos. Cater's going to work inside. Good pivot up the board and in. Great seal by Cater there. Sealing her defender. Leaving an open lane for her right hook. Really strong post move from Cater there. She has footwork down low that's beyond her years. And it's going to be a really impressive sight to see the rest of her career here in Norton. Wheaton gets the ball back. Shot clock is off, so they can hold for one if they elect two. 15 on the game clock. Minos right wing. Game clock down to five. No good on the three from Cater as it goes out of bounds. Minos saves it into the hands of Winiski, and that's how time will expire here in the first quarter. One quarter of play down, and it's all Lions. They lead Johnson and Wales. 20 to 8, stay with us. More to come on the New Max Sports Network.
We're getting ready to get underway from Emerson Gymnasium alongside Michael Clapper, I'm Jackson Walsh. We have the call for you tonight, the New Max Sports Network. Michael, a visiting analyst for tonight. Basically, you describe him as the version of me up at Endicott College. Yeah, it's great to be here. Love to help you and the uh, Wheaton Sports Information Department present this great game to our fans. Wheaton with the ball to start the second quarter. They lead by 12, and they'll turn it over. Going the other way is Winiski. Winiski takes it by herself, coast to coast with the layup. Nice, nice take by Winiski there. Being fearless with two Wheaton defenders coming toward. Sydney ropes into the game for the first time tonight for Wheaton. Gets the start here in the second quarter. Into the lane, no good on the layup for Nandes. Winiski pulls down another rebound. Hesitation trying to get around Walters and Walters will pick up the foul. Walter's part of a freshman class here for Wheaton that's from all over the country. So Sarah Binkhorst was definitely out on the road recruiting of Walter. She's out of Pennsylvania. Cater from Colorado. Dewey, who we haven't seen tonight, out of South Carolina. And then Sydney Donovan as well. She's out of Belmont, California. Not to mention another California named Jasperson. She calls Sacramento home. Kiernan. The leading scorer for Wheaton. She has five. It's the ball back off the deflection. Walters comes up short on the three ball, and we have a foul going against Johnson and Wales. Sorry, the foul is going to go against Wheaton, giving Johnson and Wales the ball. Emma Kiernan exits the game. Ryan Sachs on to replace her. Kiernan, leading scorer for the Lions at the moment. She's got five points, but maybe more impressively, four rebounds and a perfect three of three from the line. You're always going to see hustle out of Kiernan, one of the best hustlers on the team. No one's going to make an impact on the box score. Steals, blocks, rebounds, any way she can help the Lions. Johnson and Wales is going to turn it over right under their own basket. Wheaton catches a fortunate break. Ropes dishes left to Walters. Now they'll work around at Sacks. Hand off to Ropes. Watch Ropes on the outside, a three-point specialist, as some would say. Be huge to expand their game outside and open up the inside game for the Lions as well. Yeah, she's been coming in knocking one or two threes down a game, but she can really shoot it from out there the more look she's getting. Had a career-high 15 with five threes last year at Springfield, so... Game just a testament to how lethal she can be from beyond the arc. And Wheaton's going to turn it right back over to the Wildcats as we're a minute in here in the second quarter of action. Caruso. Now Ford. Or picks up the dribble, dishes left to Walker. Walker's going to go on the baseline, crosses over, brings it back out. And she took an extra step where with the feet. So both teams getting a little turnover happy is... Johnson and Wales sends it right back to the Wildcats. I, excuse me, Johnson and Wales sends it right back to the Lions and the Wildcats now have five turnovers after that traveling violation. Wheaton with four. After the first quarter, you see some tendencies from your opponents. Looking as a defensive player, you look to jump those passing lanes, make them question what the pass is going to look like and some fakes and things like that. Good cut inside, right into the paint, wide open, Fernandes. Good presence in the post there from Cater to look back outside and find Fernandes wide open, well inside the free throw line. Good drive there, and the bucket goes for Maya Jones. Maya Johnson's first bucket of the night, and another turnover for the Lions as Johnson brings it up the floor for Johnson and Wales. Making the trip up from downtown Providence for one last game before going into the Thanksgiving break. Caruso, short corner. High arcing shot falls through. Andrew. 
Enos off to Walters. Now it's Sachs left wing. Cater long two foot on the line. Gets it to go. That's what I talked about earlier. She's not going to pull it from behind the three point line all the time, but as soon as, soon as she gets within side there, she's comfortable with pulling the trigger, and that's what she did right there. That's big time to see out of her first year forward. Uh, having the experience to take that mid range shot, eventually can open up her inside game, as we saw a great drop step in the prior quarter. They'll expand her game even later in the game. And another turnover for Johnson and Wales. That's a mark that's really starting to hurt them, a backcourt violation this time, but some help coming off the bench with Winiski and alongside Oliver checking in. Johnson and Wales is coached by Kim Dweck. It's in her sixth season at the helm for the Wildcats. She's a graduate of the New Jersey Institute of Technology. It's assisted by Bill Bernard. Foul away from the ball, an offensive one. Going against Wheaton, they're gonna get Regan Cater with an illegal screen and Cater will exit right after that with her second foul. It's Wheaton's third team foul here in the second quarter and in women's collegiate basketball, the bonus a little bit different because of the corners, quarters I should say, than the men's game. Five team fouls each corner will get you into the bonus. And another Johnson and Wales turnover. Make that three straight from the Wildcats. A traveling violation sends it back to the Lions. I think this is a big possession for Wheaton coming off another turnover. Got to capitalize and score some points off these turnovers. Minos pulls up, got it to go right when you said clap. Need to capitalize and Greta Minos does there. It's her first bucket of the night. You can see some versatility from Minos as well. A couple assists, a rebound, now two points. Starting to fill up the stat sheet for the Lions. And that's something she'll do every game. At Plymouth State this weekend, only had four points, but did it in the rebounding and assist column. Another turnover gives it back to Wheaton. This is really starting to hurt Johnson and Wales. They're up to eight turnovers. Sprague works it up the floor quickly, gets it back from Minos. Mueller gets it stripped away. Winiski had a chance to pass it up floor, but good defense from Sprague to step up. Short corner jumper for four is no good. Nasha Arnold with the ball, checking in for the first time tonight. No good from Walters, and a foul on the rebound is going to go against Greta Minos. Arnold, one of the new, few New England players in the first year recruiting class for Sarah Bencourt. She's a native of North Reading, Mass., played her high school ball at Bishop Fenwick. Caruso, can't get it to go. Mueller, good defense, and she comes down with the rebound. Sprague straight away. Minos open for three, right wing, got it. Her and Sprague can really shoot it from outside, and Sarah Binkhorst is loving what her team is doing. 15-point lead, timeout, Johnson and Wales.
three of us are working right now. Back from break, and the Wheaton Collins Lions are rolling right now. They're up to a 29-14 lead over Johnson and Wales. Four minutes to go here in the second quarter of action, and this will be the half after these four minutes. Winiski, right wing, crosses over, lost it. Arnold pressing her outside and tips the pass. Arnold tenacious on the defensive end, showing it right there, forcing another turnover for the Wildcats. Wheaton Walters coming in with 9.4 steals a game. Definitely a thing to look for as we go through the game and more turnovers for the Wildcats. Speaking of turnovers, one right there for the Lions. Ford drives in. Good defense from Walters and good enough defense to force a travel against Ford before she could pull up and put up the jumper. A stat jumping off the page for the Lions, Jackson. 10 assists on 12 made field goals for the Lions. Great Great distribution from their playmakers as well. Yeah, this Wheaton team really knows how to dish the rock. And if you're looking at the new Mac stats and assists, it'll show it. Yeah, 16 assists per game, second in the conference. Definitely a huge stat for Coach Binkhorst and her staff. Johnson and Wales gets it back. Walker drives in, got fouled on the floor. Going to get Minos with the foul. It's her second personal. She'll exit Sydney Ropes back into the game. Good to see Ropes getting minutes early on here. Hopefully she can get her shot in rhythm while she's out there. And that's going to be the fifth team foul against Wheaton for the corner. That sends them into the bonus the rest of the way. Johnson Wells at the line. Walker knocks down the first of two free throws. Walker out of Staten Island, New York. Attended high school at Bishop Laughlin, and she goes two of two from the stripe there. It will be crucial for the Lions to see who steps up as two starters as Cater and Minos. Both have two fouls, likely to sit for a couple more minutes so they don't pick up that third one. Walker, leading scorer for the Wildcats this year, averaging 12 and a half. Came off the bench tonight, but starting to slowly make an impact in this game. Has the Wheaton lead down to 13. Mueller out to ropes. Fernandes in the corner. The defense there from Walker. Tipped it out of bounds. It'll stay with Wheaton nine seconds on the timer. Sprague inbounds, it's a ropes. They're working around the perimeter. Good inbounds play, Sprague's wide open, baseline too strong in the three ball. Walker pulls down the rebound. And wide open up floor is Autumn Ford for an easy two. That's a way that the Wildcats are going to look to get back into this game, looking transition off Lion misses. I think that's going to be very crucial as their turnover numbers are starting to increase. They're going to have to look in transition for, for better buckets. Ropes thought about the three, didn't take it. Now finds Sprague. Sprague gets it back to Ropes. Fernandes, mid-range killer, drives in, got blocked. But a foul call comes in. Caruso and Oliver were there on defense. They're going to get Caruso with the foul. And that's only Johnson and Wales' first team foul. Here in the second quarter. So Fernandes to the line for two shots. Off the mark on the first one. And although she's Wheaton's leading scorer so far this season, an area of struggle for her has been the free throw line. Shooting it at 48%, and she goes 0 for 2 on that trip. And it's not a lot of times where you see Somebody's field goal percentage and free throw percentage so close in number. Fernandes shoots it at 40% from the field and only 48% from the line. So if she can keep shooting it from the line, she's even going to be even more dangerous. Already the leading scorer, sorry, I should say second leading scorer in the conference, averaging 17 a game. It's going to be crucial as her game is starting to expand outside as number 33, Peyton Oliver with the bucket for the Wildcats. It's going to be crucial to see Fernandes expand her game inside, get fouled, and make those free throws as well. 
That's Arnold getting fouled, and she'll go to the free throw line. Arnold with two shots to come. Shooting it at 50% from the line so far this season, but hasn't made a lot of trips. So that number not really indicative of how Arnold's season will go at the stripe. No good from Arnold on that first free throw. Second one from Arnold up and in. So last two trips to the line for the Lions, only going one of four. Luckily for them, still holding a 10-point lead over Johnson and Wales. And Kiki Walters re-enters the game here for Wheaton, replacing Sprague. Johnson. Now Oliver, left wing. The lefty going to drive right against Mueller. Peyton Ryan in the corner, back outside. Short corner jumper. Doesn't fall through for Ford. Arnold with the rebound, and she got, nope, going to say she got fouled, but she traveled with it. Peyton Oliver applied pressure to Arnold right as she came down with the rebound, and I don't think Arnold was expecting to see her there. Yeah, that was good controlled pressure by Peyton Oliver. Knowing she had two personal fouls was crucial. No contact, just good, good pressure and forced the turnover. Ford with it, one minute to go. Here in the first half, and inside with the finish, there's Walker. The closest this game's been in a bit. Only an eight-point lead for the Lions. But Andy's trying to expand that. She'll hand it off to Ropes. Now it's Walters. Mueller straight away, dishes left to Arnold. Arnold pass left, 10 on the shot clock. Ropes is going to set up with it. Ropes way downtown. Off the mark on that one, and rebound right there for her was Walker. Yeah, that was her first clean look, as we mentioned, three-point specialist. It's hard to get in a groove after that first look. Back the other way, Fernandes on the steal. Has Arnold, and she'll get it to her. Arnold, too strong in the finish. Ropes there on the follow. She goes up for a block from behind by Oliver, and a little reverse there to find the hoop was Arnold. Good persist persistence by Arnold there. Shot clock off, five seconds to go for the Wildcats. Walker, three seconds. Outside, they're going to have to put it up. Johnson off the mark, and Wheaton will storm into halftime with a 10-point lead. So after one half, it's Wheaton 32, Johnson and Wales 22. We'll be right back for the halftime show in just a couple of minutes here on the New Max Sports Network.
interested to see who, who keeps the ball in possession in the second half. Yeah, the, this really big number that jumps out of me. We talk about how much hustle Greta Minos has and how far Cater is making strides in her game. Minos in the plus-minus category is a plus-18. Cater, plus-17. And for one half of playing only a 10-point lead, that is an almost unheard-of number. Yeah, it's great to see that hustle from each of your starters, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to plague them throughout the, the half to see who's going to hustle more, who's going to get those dirty points or those rebounds or blocks, who's going to get your nose in there for steals, and you know who you're going to get that from. So halftime here, we in Lions with the lead, 32-22 over Johnson and Wales. Second half action coming up shortly here on the New Max Sports Network. I'm Jackson Walsh with guest analyst Michael Clapper.
Ready to get underway here inside Emerson Gymnasium. It's the Wheaton College Lions leading Johnson and Wales 32-22. After the first 20 minutes of action, balanced scoring attack from the Lions. Abby Fernandes leading the way for Wheaton with six points. Kieran and Aminos both with five. Ten-point lead for Wheaton. Looking to expand that here in the last 20 minutes of play inside Emerson Gymnasium. Michael Clapp root alongside myself. Clapp, it's been great to have you tonight. Yeah, it's been great to be here. I mean, this is awesome atmosphere in Emerson, Emerson Gymnasium. Great facilities here at Wheaton. I'm so excited to be here with you, Jackson. A uh, parent and an adult heavy crowd here, to say the least, tonight. Thanksgiving break getting underway here for Wheaton College students. So everyone's home, but we're here calling basketball on the New Max Sports Network, and Johnson and Wales turns it over to start the third quarter of action. Wheaton's going to get the ball back. Yeah, as we mentioned, the halftime show and the first half, turnovers have been the real key for both teams, especially the Wildcats. Now their 12th turnover, having 11 in the first half. Let's see if Wheaton can capitalize on some of those mistakes and turn them into points. Inside, no good there from Fernandes. Winiski pushes for the Wildcats into the lane. She'll step outside now. Walter's still there on her on defense. Right wing, it's Ryan inside. The southpaw, Oliver, goes to work up with the left and in. Oliver leading a score for Johnson and Wales tonight. She's up to nine points. Fernandes outside. She'll call off a set, get it to Minos. Right wing now straight away. It's Walters back to Minos. Cater inside, wastes no time, gets the bucket. Cater is so, so good down low. Yeah, developing great position as a first year forward down there, well above her years. I think it's very interesting for her just to be down there and put in great position for the Lions. Good ball movement from Johnson to Wales. Winiski hits the tray ball outside. Uh, a junior, Winiski, coming over from UConn Avery Point going to be key for her to step up in the second half. There's Cater back-to-back -back buckets on the offensive end. She's starting to get in a rhythm down low for the Lions. And Cater isolating herself on the block might be a key to switch up the defense as Wildcats are sitting in a 2-3 zone. Might have to switch that up if Cater gets going. Walker left wing. Good cut inside. Caruso wide open. She finishes. We're seeing some halftime adjustments from both teams as they saw some deficiencies from both defenses and Exposing them right now. Teams trading buckets. There's Kiki Walters putting her head down off the glass and in. We saw some of her aggressive nature coming out in the first half. Now getting going in the second half. Great sign for the Lions. Winiski uses a screen behind the back outside to Caruso. Good job stepping into the passing lane by Minos to deflect that out of bounds. And our first substitution of the half, Johnson and Wales. We'll have Autumn Ford check in. She replaces Caruso. Johnson and Wales out of the GNAC. 0-2 on the season, looking for their first win. Suffered 15-point losses to both Salve Regina and Salem State so far this year. Off the mark is the Wildcats there. Cater on the rebound. They'll push. Kiernan. Outside to Walters, now straight away for Andes. Good ball movement, Minos. Give it to me! Greta Minos for three outside. And Wheaton is starting to roll here in the second half. Great ball movement from all players on the outside, having a four out, one in concept for the Lions. Results in an open three for Minos outside. Foul is going to go on Greta Minos, I believe, and it will. That's going to send her to the bench. That's her third personal. Riley Sprague re-enters the game alongside Ryan Sachs, replacing Emma Kiernan. Johnson Wales to inbound in front of their own bench. Walters stepping up with the steal. She'll go one-on-one -on -one with Winiski. Crosses over. Scoop no good. Winiski there on the rebound. Could have looked for Fernandes, who was the trailer on that play, but might have not had her in her vision. And another seal. Walters, coast to coast, with the finish. Great activity for Walters on the defensive end, creating transition points for the Lions. 14-point lead for Wheaton, and we'll have another timeout. 6.52 to go 
Wheaton, 43. Johnson and Wales, 29. We'll be right back. Fast-paced first three minutes here in the third quarter of action. And Wheaton comes out in favor of it. They lead by 14 over Johnson and Wales. Everyone getting in on the action for the Lions. Three players all with eight points. Walters, Cater, and Minos. Wildcats will try to slow them down. Ryan dishes right to Ford. Ford outside now straight away. It's Oliver still swing left. Ryan tries a three. Swishes that one home. And right on cue, she cuts to the down to that Wheaton lead to 11. Sprague into the game. She has it right wing. Trying to get position with Cater. She'll get it to Fernandes. Good bounce pass to Walters. Maybe one extra pass there. Johnson Wales forces a turnover. Winiski to the cup. No foul call. Good D from Fernandes. Sprague comes down with a rebound. Sprague pass left to Walters. Walters will swing it back across to Sprague. And swatting down the pass there was Peyton Ryan. That's the definition of getting her hands up on defense. We're going to look for an impact from Peyton Ryan for the Wildcats. Number 11, a senior. Coming in 44% from three-point mark, too. Five threes in her last game, scoring 15 points against Salem State. Let's see if she makes an impact on the defensive and offensive end for the Wildcats. Cater, another great cut. Fernandes finds her. Cater's got 10. Well, that's what you look lo you look for from your playmakers. Fernandes, a great pass right on the dime to Cater for another easy two. Cater leading all scorers right now with 10 points, 5 of 8 from the field, and she steals that one away. Walters will push. Walters. Tries another scoop, couldn't get that to go. And stepping up to take a charge, Peyton Ryan. Little out of control on the push there from Walters. It's going to get the charge called against her, giving possession back to the Wildcats. Sydney ropes back into the game for Wheaton. She replaces Walters. There's Walters' second personal foul. Not a lot of three-point shooting going on from both sides. Three from beyond the arc for Wheaton and just one three for Johnson and Wales. Sarah Winiski knocked that down not long ago. Mino says two for three-point territory and Sprague has one. Good move inside, Walker. Not an and one as that's contradictory to what Johnson and Wales thought. Foul's going to go on the floor against Regan Cater. That's her third personal, so her and Minos both up to three fouls, and Cater will come off the floor because of that. Mueller on to replace her. Nice looking post move by Walker there. First shot, looking to be denied. Second time going up and under. Winiski travels with it off the inbound, back to the Lions, so we'll catch a break after the foul call. Fernandes crosses the timeline, dishes left to Sprague. Errant pass, Sprague tried to cross it over to Ropes. Pass is too tall for Ropes, out of bounds, back to the Wildcats. Under five to go in the third quarter, Wheaton leading by 13. Errant. 
And another Johnson and Wales turnover. Their 17th turnover of the game. And it's going to be hard to win a ball game with that many turnovers. Yeah, I think Wheaton's looking to capitalize on some of these, knowing that they're hovering toward that 20 mark, which is very hard, to, like you said, to win a game like that. Let's see if Wheaton can capitalize. Left wing, it's ropes, interior pass, looking for Sachs. Sachs couldn't get a hold of it. Good pressure on defense there from Ryan. Johnson and Wales with it on the baseline. Madison Clark had it. She entered the game for the first time tonight. Inside, Walker, aggressive move down low, pushes it up with the right and in. Walker's got eight. Walker coming in averaging 12, 12 and a half a game, shooting 41% from the field, looking real efficient tonight. Three ball no good from Sprague, rebound for Ryan. This is still a ball game at 11 points with just over 13 minutes to play. So nowhere near to out of reach is Johnson and Wales. Winiski. Oliver dishes right. There's Clark and she traveled with it. Arnold and Walters both at the table re-entering for the Lions. Autumn Ford's going to check back in for Johnson and Wales, replacing Walker. Fernandes. Now it's Ropes. Ropes throws it into Mueller. Back outside, Walters. Ropes open for three. Right wing. Got it. Was looking for her to get going from beyond the arc, and she does there her first bucket of the night. It's great to see the first one go in. Now let's see if she can carry that momentum going into this fourth quarter in three minutes. Trying to get her going beyond the arc. That's one of the biggest things as a shooter. You just got to see the first one fall down, and then a lot more will start raining down. And with a response, Peyton Oliver down low. Under three to play now. That Wheaton lead still holding at 12. Fernandes, corner, too strong. Goes right into the hands of Mueller, who puts it up. And she's too strong as well. Rebound there from Oliver, and... Here's Clark pushing it up the floor. She'll slow it down just next to the new Mac logo. Good defensive play from Fernandes and a big collision between Winiski and Walters fighting for that loose ball. But that was all created by Abby Fernandes with another defensive hustle play here off to our right. Second personal going against Winiski. Third team foul of the quarter for Johnson and Wales. Walters gets a screen from Mueller. Ropes thought about another three attempt, drives in, gets it back to Walters. Pass was nearly stolen by Ryan Fernandes, mid-range, got it. She is so good from the mid-range game. I mean, she's a fantastic shooter, but you're not going to see her pull from beyond the arc very often. She'll always pull from inside the three-point line, and she does there for another basket. Skipping through the lane, but no good. Was Clark at the rim, and Wheaton going back the other way. Arnold gets it to Fernandes. Three ball, open. No good was Walters. And now Ford's going to push back. Ford gets it to Clark. Clark's going to slow things down to get a good handle on the ball. Guarded by Arnold, and off the mark on the pass, looking for Oliver in the post. That'll be the Wildcats' 20th turnover of the game as we discussed in the first half and at the halftime report. This is, this is a huge stat for the Wildcats coming out in the second half, and they've yet to solve it. Let's see if Wheaton capitalizes on some of those mistakes. Walker back into the game for Johnson and Wales. Wheaton with it on the offensive end. It's Ropes right wing looking for an open teammate. Gets it to Walter straight away. Back to Ropes. Ropes goes baseline. Mueller couldn't handle the bounce pass on the block. We're seeing the Wheaton offense trying to adjust to the 2-3 zone, trying to get a girl to foul line and the short corner. It's going to make things easier. Not as much dribbling, some easy passing. Look to see on the next couple possessions if they solve some of that 2-3 zone. 
Maya Johnson back into the game for Johnson Wales. That's her with the ball on the right wing. She's going to dribble left. Fernandes switches on defense. And down low, open as Walker. She gets double teamed, I should say, outside. Not a good bounce on the jumper there from Ford. Fernandes pushes. Good bounce pass to Walters in the corner. Walters going to bring it outside. Get it back to Fernandes. Under a minute to go in the third quarter. Shot clock down to 15. Mueller. Up fake, got fouled. Not going to be going to the line. Johnson and Wales not up to five fouls yet. So the shot clock resets to 20. Wheaton will inbound it on the baseline. Foul's going to go against Peyton Oliver, her third personal. It'll be ropes to inbound. Right of the hoop on the baseline. She gets it into Mueller. Worked around outside. It's Fernandes. Now left wing. Worked into the corner. Ropes off the mark on that three attempt ball. And gets tipped around. And the call will be out of bounds off of Wheaton. So Johnson and Wales back with possession. Shot clock is off. 27.9 on the game clock. If you're Coach Binghorst, you love that look. As you inbounding from the baseline, working all the way around to the opposite corner, and a great look for your three-point specialist ropes. You're going to look for her to catch on to more momentum there. Wild shot in the lane. No good from Ryan. Wheaton back with it. 12 to go. Fernandes. Got her pass stolen away. Going the other way is Ford. Five to go. Ryan open in the corner. Takes the three. Long on that one. And time's going to expire here in the third quarter. So Wheaton still holding on to that lead. Last ten minutes to come. Wheaton 50. Johnson Wales 36. Stay with us. Fourth quarter coming up on the New Max Sports Network. Fourth quarter underway here in Emerson Gymnasium. Wheaton holding on to the lead over Johnson and Wales. They lead by 14. And not a good way to start the fourth quarter. Wheaton's going to turn it over. Couldn't find Cater down low on the baseline. Back the other way for Johnson and Wales. It's Johnson. Oliver on the perimeter inside looking for Caruso. Ball got tipped away out of bounds off of Wheaton. Both teams really getting it done in the paint scoring-wise. Johnson and Wales, 22 points in the paint. Wheaton with 20. Abby Fernandes picked off the pass. She's going the other way. Pulls up, free throw line. Gets the Freddy rolling in. She's got 10 points. Her and Cater leading the way for the Lions. That's her game, that one dribble pull-up. Gets her real settled. Nice-looking stroke from Fernandes there. Wheaton really leading the rebounding game. If you're looking at second chance points so far, Johnson and Wales just one second chance point, Wheaton with 10. So another big difference in the game is Cater pulls down a rebound for her sixth. Well, coming off that second chance point stat, we also see a, a big margin, 20 to 16 in favor of the Lions rebounding wise, and also 11 to three margin offensive rebounding too. It's a big stat 
and it's going to be a big key in this fourth quarter. Minos off the mark on the three, tracking down the rebound in the corner is Johnson, and she'll keep it herself. Crosses half court, picked up by Minos at the three-point line. He's going to put the motor on on the baseline, finds Caruso, and that one just didn't roll home for Caruso. Rebound there for Fernandes. She'll get it to Kiernan. Now in the corner, it's Walters. Minos straight away. Gets it back to Walters' left wing. Johnson and Wales still in the 2-3 zone. Fernandes, long two, got it. She is getting in a groove. Six of 12 from the field. Leading all scorers with 12 points. She's starting to heat up, and her teammates are starting to find her. When she's getting in that groove, her teammates know where she's going to be, right around that mid-range, a little 18-foot jump shot there. Fernandes also finding her teammates tonight. She's got five assists to go along with the 12 points. Wildcats respond. Three balls good for Maya Johnson in the near side corner. Walters, baseline, floater. Comes up short, but she got fouled. So Walters was in the act of shooting. She'll go to the line for two shots. Shooting it at 78% from the line this year. A really impressive number to go along with really the rest of her stat sheet. 11 points per game, 78% from the line, as I said. You're looking at the rebounding game. I mean, almost unheard of for a guard to be the leading rebounder of the team. She has 7.2 rebounds per game as she goes 2 of 2 from the line there. An interesting set. She's had 10-plus rebounds in three games this season. It's, it's pretty unbelievable to know that they've only played five games, and a guard at her size has three of the five for 10-plus rebounds as well. Yeah, that was one of the craziest stretches I've seen stat-wise last week. Where That was in three straight games. She pulled down 10 straight rebounds, and she's only listed at 5'7", so for her to come outside and crash the glass like she does... That's almost unheard of in the college game. Ball goes out of bounds. It's going to stay with Johnson and Wales. Johnson dishes left. Winiski guarded by Minos, one of Wheaton's best defenders. Winiski, floater. Strong finish and move there from Winiski. Really shifty point guard who can slash down inside. He's got seven points tonight. Fernandes uses the screen from Kieran into the corner. Minos, three attempts. Just rattles in and out. Winiski there on the rebound. Well, it's interesting to see Fernandes taking what the defense gives her. She's grabbing attention as her mid-range game is starting to expand and get hot. She's seen open team teammates like Minos in the corner for open jump shots. Johnson inside. Oliver gets it right back to Johnson. Fernandes. Almost had a steal, got tripped up. Ball's going to go in the corner. Kiernan tries to save it, and it's going to roll out of bounds, but Johnson and Wales only have six seconds. Well, the shot clock's going to reset, actually. It originally said six seconds, but a shot clock reset as it goes back to 30, so that'll make life a lot easier here for the Wildcats. Oh, now the shot clock is going to be fixed here inside Emerson Gym. So it does reset to six. So Johnson and Wales will have to go the length of the floor with six on the shot clock. Winiski going to pull it three on the timer. Probably had time to take a couple more dribbles, but is off the mark on the deep three attempt. Easy rebound for Sprague and the Lions. Minos, corner, pulls up, long two. Too strong, Mueller. Saves it to Kiernan. Fernandes. No good on there. And wide open, I mean wide open, is Emma Kiernan on the block for an easy putback. Yeah, and that'll be her sixth rebound. And probably the easiest two points of the night tonight for Kiernan. Not going to find two points easier than that. Your whole season probably is. Another Johnson and Wales turnover. Gives it back to the Wheaton College Lions. Ford and Caruso.
back into the game for Johnson and Wales and checking back in for the Lions is Ryan Sachs. Fernandes, another pull up, comes up short this time. Wildcats push it up floor, wide open shot, gets it to go. Autumn Ford. A little bit of a defensive lapse there for Wheaton not getting back. This back to a 15 point game now and Minos responds with a little pull up on the corner. Minos 10 points. Miller shuts down the pass on the baseline. And also going along with Minos, going into double figures, we see her filling up the stat sheet with all four assists and two rebounds, which is used to fill up the stat sheet for Wheaton and their overall team statistics. Walters and Ropes back into the game for the Lions and jump hook inside, no good from Oliver, got her own rebound, but then got fouled as she's trying to put it back up. Time is not on the side of the Johnson & Wales Wildcats right now, trailing by 17 with under five minutes to play. First one is good at the line for Oliver, leading the way for Johnson & Wales so far tonight with 12 points. Second one from the left, he comes up short. Mueller tracks down the rebound. Sprague off to Ropes. Ropes gets it back, tries a three. No good off the mark. Walters comes down with the offensive board and she'll send it back outside to Sprague. Sprague's gonna try to set something up, passes left to Walters, she'll work it back left to Ropes. Ropes back to Walters straight away. Dribble left, Ropes thought about the three, drives in. Pass inside to Sachs, up with the right, blocked away by Caruso and quickly finds Ford in transition. And right when Ford put it on the floor, she got fouled by Walters. That's Walters' third personal, only Wheaton's second team foul of this fourth quarter. We can see the Wildcats really honing in on their defensive rotations in the 2-3 zone. Always making sure they have someone in the middle guarding the foul line. Johnson, off right to Ford. Ford's gonna go left, use the screen, and rolling is Caruso after the screen. Too strong on the finish. Could have seen a charge call there as Riley Sprague was in position, but play on from the crew tonight. Good ball movement from the Lions. Right wing, it's Ropes back. Sprague gets it right back to her. Ropes. Another three attempt. This one falls through. That's her second tray of the night. The South Shore sniper out of Duxbury, Mass. Ropes got six points. Ryan. Dangerous pass, gets it to Johnson. Johnson to Caruso, right back to her. Puts it on the floor, Euro step inside, can't finish with a finger roll. Ropes pulls down the rebound, gets it to Sprague. Sprague back to Ropes, who just knocked down the three inside to Mueller. Mueller tried to shovel it, couldn't get it. Sacks on the rebound. Ropes in traffic down low. Jump hook comes up short, might have been tipped. Caruso pulled down the board. We got under three to play. 19-point lead for the Lions. We're going to have to see the Wildcats with a sense of urgency being down 19. Only with two minutes left, we're going to have to see some, maybe some high pick and roll like you just saw there. Working inside number 33, Payton. Oliveira. And a steal there. Maddie Mueller first the turnover and a high arcing shot falls through the bottom of the net for Kiki Walters. Don't look now, but Walters is in double figures yet again and Sarah Binkhorst will take a 30 second timeout. It looks like we have substitutions coming when we come back from break here on the New Max Sports Network.
Looks like we may have had some audio technical difficulties coming back from break. Should be up and running with audio here now. Didn't miss much, new substitutions. And for the Lions, Murray Tona, Madeline Dewey, and Kenneth Jasperson. As I'm saying that, Johnson and Wales with another turnover gives it back to the Lions. That's Jasperson to bring it up floor. Pass off left to Sprague. Now it's Dewey straight away. Sprague tries a three ball left wing off the mark. And on the rebound there is Winiski. Winiski's going to push. Transition three. Can't get that to fall. Arnold on the rebound. And another rebound for Wheaton. A huge stat for there. One minute away from a win. There's Kenneth Jasperson getting in on the love. First year out of California, knocks down the three to give Wheaton a 24-point lead. I think it's great for Coach Binkhorst just to see what she has on her bench, maybe extend the rotation, see some um, big three-point shooters on their bench. Shot off the glass there goes for Kyla Thompson. Sophomore out of the Bronx and... More substitutions here. Catherine Panic into the game for the first time tonight for Wheaton. Checking in for Johnson and Wales, number 34, Danielle Odie. 52 seconds to go. It's going to be Wheaton's fourth consecutive win. And a lot of momentum going into the Thanksgiving break here for the Lions as they begin their five-game homestand. Foul well away from the hoop goes against Johnson and Wales. It's going to be charged to Madison Clark. Penick outside to Sprague. Sprague's going to pass right. Jasperson back to Sprague in the corner. Dewey, she can hit those. No good that time and not able to finish the follow-up was Penick. Coming up short. No good on the finish was Thompson. Shot clock is off and we can just dribble it out. Jasperson with it outside. It's picked up by Clark, but last three seconds winding down and that's how this game will end. Make that four straight for the Wheaton College Lions this time. They take down Johnson and Wales, 68 to 46. Kiki Walters and Abby Fernandes both leading the way for the Lions with 12 points. And that's been the story the last couple of the games. It's either one or two of those players that's leading the scoring for the Lions. And really appreciate you coming on tonight. Our guest analyst, Michael Clapp, Rude Clapp. Thanks for being with me. Thank you for having me. Uh, thank you to uh, Wheaton Sports Information Department for having me. It was great to be here right before Thanksgiving break. Have a good night, everyone. And another special thanks to our video coordinator, A.J. Uchi, up here in the booth. How you been? And another special thanks to Wheaton College SID Alan Wickstrom, who's also our producer for putting this together. But don't go anywhere. Lions post game coming up here on the Max Sports Network with an interview. Post game here from Wheaton College inside Emerson Jays. I'm going by Greta Minos. Greta, thanks for being with me. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
You guys, fourth straight win this time, a 20-plus point victory. What's been the key for your success in this four-point win stretch? I think lately we've just been focusing on defense. I mean, we're not really worried about scoring. We're, we're a well-rounded team. We can trust in each other, and I think we're really focusing on containment and um, help the helper on defense. Yeah, I know, and you've been a big part of that defensively and offensively. I talked about it on the broadcast tonight as well as um, – my article in the newspaper this week, just how you make an impact on the game, whether it's scoring or another facet to the box score. When do you feel like you're at your best helping this team contribute? I feel like I'm at my best when I'm on the floor just distributing. I don't think I'm necessarily a, a point guard in that way, but I think moving the ball on the court is honestly, I feel like it's a strength of mine because I'm able to, like a bigger guard, I'm able to see the post over the top. Um, and I think feeding it to especially Regan, 6-1, from Colorado, I mean, she was such a steal, and I think I really appreciate her, and I think utilizing her is, a, is definitely one of my goals. Yeah, Regan's been great this year. I just really, she plays veteran like how well she plays down low. Really good footwork. Uh, Thanksgiving stretch going up here. So I just said four straight wins. How are you guys feeling going into Thanksgiving break? Uh, we're feeling great. I mean, Coach says it. We call it stuffing the turkey. We don't really know what that means, but we just go along with it, and uh, we stuffed the turkey tonight. All right, this is Greta Mino, sophomore guard for Wheaton College up here after a big win over Johnson & Wales. Greta, good luck going forward. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Jackson. For Wheaton College and the New Max Sports Network, I'm Jackson Walsh. Thanks for tuning in, and good night.